Welcome to Entrepreneurs International Network, where entrepreneurs learn, network, and grow. I'm Roger Killen, the organizer. This evening, Manny Nuak is training us on how to build virtual relationships that really do serve our business. Manny, I have a few questions that's, uh, that'll help us get to know you as a person, as opposed to as a trainer. My first question is this, what's the best decision that you have ever made? All right, so uh, the, as we were talking earlier, the best decision I ever made was to join the, the Marine Corps when I was a young man because I was one of those guys in a lot of trouble and I didn't keep myself disciplined and do what I need to do. I learned a tremendous amount of discipline and I learned my motive for all, all life, which is there's nothing I can't do. Oh, wow, that was a good decision. All right, the second question. What is your favorite way of relaxing? Well, my favorite way of relaxing is to go to the beach, to pull out a chair and a book and uh, just enjoy the, the beautiful weather, the sun, and the sand and the peacefulness of sitting on the beach. Ah, beautiful. And my third and final question, what is the best piece of advice that anyone has ever given you? All right, well, I go back to um, a time when uh, one of my great mentors, uh, I was put me in my first management job and he said, Manny, make a decision, will you please? You see, he taught me how to make a decision. He said, if you make the wrong decision, then you can always make another decision to correct it. But not making a decision is like standing still. Nothing happens until you make a decision. Those are three profound uh, uh, bits of information. Thank you for sharing those with me. Now, uh, participants, uh, when you have questions during Manny's training, would you please type them into the chat? And every 10 minutes or so, I will pose them to Manny. Uh, you're going to be sent a link to the recording of this talk in a few hours. Uh, but uh, please take notes anyway, because the very act of taking notes is going to increase what you absorb by as much as 30%. Manny, are you ready to wow us with your words of wisdom? I am. Then take it away. The stage is <laughs> all yours. Okay. Thank you, Roger. And thanks, everybody who's here with us tonight. Um, and... You know, we always like to start with the burning question that I know many of you out there have right now, which is, what's in this tonight for me? Why, why do I need to be here? So what we're going to talk about is, first of all, how to set up your environment, how to set up yourself so that you project and look great in the, uh, on a virtual networking platform. Um, what works and what doesn't work virtually when it comes to networking and how do I transfer the great networking skills that you already have, the stuff that you learned in in-person networking, how do I transfer that into the virtual environment? So that's what we're going to cover tonight. Um, I'm just trying to, well, there we go. Okay, so how do you build relationships virtually that grow your business? This comes from the cover of the new book that just got released, and we're going to give you a great shot at this book at the end um, for practically nothing. So that's what we're going to talk about today. What we're presenting today is only a small piece of this book, so if you like what you see, uh, you're going to get a whole lot more than that in the book. So I want to welcome you to 
2021, the explosion of virtual networking. Networking is building relationships, remember, that generate results and success for all the people together. Uh, I was once considered what you would call a great networker. I even wrote a couple of books and networking is how I built the business I'm in today and, and how I built some other businesses and how I helped other people in building their business. Relationship building, which is what we get from networking is the way business is done. Now, along comes 2020, the pandemic, COVID-19, isolation, masks, social distancing, and a death to networking as we knew it. All events were basically canceled. We were, we were stopped cold and we kind of accepted that as the way it is. And then we couldn't go to the normal chamber meetings, the lead groups, the conferences. We couldn't fly to the trade shows. We couldn't do any of that. But the thing is networking is alive and networking is still here. It's just different. So the question you have to ask yourself is, are you ready? Are you ready? The opportunities in the virtual networking world are huge. But are you ready to build relationships and make it work? It's time to network virtually. And as my friend George, who's with us tonight, George, uh, I go back to our conversation when you told me one day that having a Zoom conversation is pretty much not a whole lot of different than sitting in a um, coffee shop and just having a talk. And I said, hmm, that's interesting because nothing really is different, is it? Yeah, we're on a screen, but I see you, you see me, we're having a conversation, we're working on building our relationships. And remember, networking is about building your relationships more than anything else. Conversations still take place. Relationships can be built. And all the stuff we're used to doing in networking live is still well and is still there for us. It's just virtual. So what do you do? Well, let me start by three with three simple things and then we'll get into sharing the detail on some points. But these are the three simple things that I wanna start with. You gotta get your attitude right. And that's what I mean. Like, it doesn't matter whether I can't do it live anymore. I can do it virtually. You can build relationships. You can build your prospects based through tools like Zoom, but you have to start doing it. And if you want to see success, you got to get out there and do it. Forget the fact that you can't go to live events anymore. It doesn't really matter. Start being happy that you can do so much from the comfort of your home and office with a great shirt on and perhaps shorts. Get your attitude adjusted to the yes, I can mode. Number two is start selling, I'm sorry, start setting up on Zoom or whatever tool you're using, start setting up those 30 minute meetings. Start setting up those get togethers just like you did at the coffee shop. And I encourage you spend a little money and get a real account. Don't try to work on, on these free accounts because guess what? You're saving so much money by not buying those five to eight dollar cups of coffee. You can spend it on the tool. Start planning the meeting. And in our book, we actually spend some time. We show you a great little detail um, planning sheet so you can use that. Start conversations and building these relationships in a virtual manner. After a while, you'll simply think, wow, it's live. Give it a try 
and watch what happens. You don't have to travel. You can compact the meeting into 30 minutes because you really don't need more than 30 minutes. And you can have these great opportunities. You can do so many more meetings when you're doing them virtually. So there's a lot of upside to this. And the third thing is get involved in some virtual groups, some online events and start networking. You're all here tonight. So we know you're here tonight because this is the kind of stuff that's gonna help you propel your business going forward. Look for the opportunities that are out there. You know, I've been on calls with hundreds of people from all over the world all who could buy my products or your products, especially if you have something that can sell anywhere. And I'm doing all that from the comfort of my office, my home, wherever. Yes, you can. The mask, the social distancing may go on for a bit. We're not gonna get rid of it that quick. Conferences and trade shows, unfortunately might be a little ways down the road yet, but virtual is here today. It's proven to work. It saved you dollars. It helps you build great networks. So get out there and start using this tool and start doing. It. So today I'm going to focus on three areas. These are just three points that came out of my book and they're only part of the point. So there's a whole lot more there. I'm giving you what I can in the time frame that we have. So the first thing we're going to talk about is how do you set up your environment and how do you set up yourself in this type of process? Set up your physical environment for virtual networking. When you do regular networking, all you have to do is show up, right? You, the facilities are there, everything's set. But in the virtual world, you're responsible for what does it look like behind me? What does it look like where I'm at? And if you're, if you're in one of those tough environments right now, don't be embarrassed about it. That's why you're here tonight, to, so we can help you in making your, your place and you look really great when you're doing virtual networking. But I don't know about you, but let's start with background. Um, I'm sure many of you are tired of seeing all the things, the beds, the kitchens, the unfinished basement ceilings, and all the other stuff we have bit witnessed as virtual networkers. It was cute when it first started, but cute left a while ago. So if today you wanna be successful, as a professional networker, what the people see is important. And you can see some people like Roger has a great background over there and, and a few of the rest of you have too. Today, if you wanna be successful professional networker, what do people see when they see you? You can use a virtual background. Many people use the virtual backgrounds um, you know, Zoom comes with a bunch of them. Uh, you can click on them and use them as your background. Uh, you can also take a picture uh, out there and use that as your background. I saw some really creative stuff from people. I, we used to meet with this breakfast group every Thursday morning at a certain restaurant. So, and when we couldn't do that anymore, we went to a virtual environment and people were using the restaurant as the backdrop. So it just made it look good. I did a lot of work in the convention industry and a lot of people I know were using convention centers behind them, picture of the Vegas center or Chicago or Toronto or wherever. It's just a nice background, but be careful because sometimes you get what we call fuzzy head syndrome, which means that it's not, your background just isn't focusing in right. Uh, you might be floating around in there. So always test your background before you actually go live. Uh, 
and then some Macs, like the reason I have some issue on my Macs, I'm working with an older Mac here and the background doesn't work as well as it could. I love the virtual background, but make sure that your background isn't distracting because remember, you're trying to have a conversation. You're trying to build your network. Now, you can use a curtain. I prefer to use a curtain. I have a white one sitting behind me. Uh, however, you can use any color you prefer. It doesn't really matter. Um, and you know, well, that all I did was order a photographer backdrop curtain for about 35 bucks off Amazon. I put up a metal pipe at the top. If you use plastic, it kind of sags and that, that doesn't look good. I put a couple of holders on the side. We hung it up, bam. And what does that do? Well, and if you can see me, and I think you can, uh, if I took this curtain away, you might say, whoa, what kind of mess is going on over here? Let me take those off a minute. You might say, you know, that's what's going on out here. And so what we try to do is just pull the curtain across, bang, it's a whole new world. Everything else is hidden. So it's just a nice little trick. And now it looks like I'm, I'm a real professional. I could hang some stuff on the curtain. I could do that and it would look even better. Now, the next thing we would talk about, so that's the curtain piece. Um, also, put your camera up a little higher. This is one of those little tricks that people learn. You shouldn't be looking down. Normally when you're working on your computer on a desk, the natural position is the computer screen is lower than yourself. And what you really need to do is raise that up because it gives you so much better of a picture. It makes it look like you're paying better eye contact. Now, I get all that from photographers who are trying to help you come across better. So get a box, get some books, get something, set it up so it, it looks a little higher. And I'm gonna show you, when I take this now and I put it up a little higher than the norm, you can see that now it looks like I'm looking at you. Because when someone's looking down, it just creates a, a different type of background and it doesn't make you look as good as you could. Uh, I have a counter in my office so I can put my laptop on the counter. I could just sit in a regular chair. Now it looks like I'm looking up. Uh, just something, give yourself that eight to 12 inches above the uh, line of the desk and you will just come across so much uh, more professional. Third thing is when you're working on your environment, don't read from a piece of paper or a book or a magazine or anything like that. Because when I'm sitting here and I'm reading from this or I'm reading from a screen back here, see what's happened is now my eye contact has left from you because I should be looking at this little button up here. So it looks like I'm always paying attention to you. And one of the great things is if I take the data that I have, I put it into a Word document and I put it on the screen, you don't know what's on my screen. You only see what I share. And on my screen are the notes and everything. And as I'm talking about them, it looks like I'm talking to you. And that's far better because I could take this book and I could pull some points out, right? But would that look good? Or I could look over here or down here. We want to try to keep that eye contact going. Um, people just have a better tendency to, to listen to you when it looks like you're paying attention. Manny, are you ready for your first question? Sure, shoot away. Please comment on audio. As far as um, it is very critical that you have good, clear audio. One of the reasons you see me have, I have a set of headphones on here is because sometimes in the audio, you will get some feedback 
and that type of stuff on the line by using a set of headphones it actually stops that feedback from coming you can buy a great mic uh for under a hundred bucks and i don't mean just good i mean a great mic for under a hundred bucks and when your voice comes across it just sounds so much better do you have any specific brand or model recommendations for that great mic under a hundred dollars yeah, I can send them to you. I don't have them with me right now, but I can actually share them with you in the group. Thanks, Manny. No more, no further questions. Back to you. Okay. Um, number four here is don't be playing on your phone or your laptop or anything else. Because the thing you have to understand is everything that you do while you're on the screen and talking to people, people can see whether I'm looking at my phone this way, even if you think they can't, people can see. So I always want you to remember, stay 100% focused on the other person, the person that you're trying to build the relationship with. Number five is relax and enjoy the conversation. Be yourself. I know you might be here today, I know you're here today because you are looking to be ahead of everyone else. You're looking to be really good at this virtual networking thing. So don't try to be somebody else, be yourself. And that was a good question on the audio because I didn't add that to the presentation today, although it is in the book. Uh, but let's talk about lighting a minute. The, one of the other key things is you gotta have the right kind of lighting. And the lighting is very critical. Uh, the lighting I'm working with tonight, and it's dark outside. I like to work in front of a window. Uh, I have a window here. If it was daytime, I could use that natural light. And there's nothing as good as natural. But what I'm using, just so you know, is, is nothing more than a light bar. And you can see that when I take that light off, now I'm really dark aren't I? And just that little bit of light. And this is nothing more than maybe a $15 light bar with LED. I Velcro it to the wall. It sets out the right light. And then now you can see that the light is so much better if I put it back in the right spot, that is. So um, there's a lot of lighting options out there that you can use. Again, the best light is natural LED. You can buy a great professional lighting kit, again, off Amazon for about $125, which has the filters and everything else. But lighting, just like audio, are two of the key pieces. People need to hear you and people need to see you. Because I don't know how many times I've been on networking and I can barely make out the person because the environment is way too dark. Okay, so we got your environment set. What about you? Let's take a look at what do we need to do for you to make you look great in a virtual environment? Uh, and believe me, we've all seen, especially in the beginning of the pandemic, we saw some crazy looking people online. Um, and uh, they may be a little bit scary, uh, but let's look at some simple stuff that can make you come across so much better. I always look professional. That's what I say. Virtual events are no different than physical events. You should always look great. It doesn't matter if it's virtual. Remember, you could meet somebody just like tonight. You could meet somebody who could change your business moving forward. So you need to look good. 15 years ago, I used to get busted on all the time because I would come to a physical networking event and I'd have a jacket on and a tie and I'd always look that way. That was kind of the look because remember, you don't wanna be like everybody else. You wanna stand out a little bit. And um, at that point, I had just come out of the exhibit industry. I was used to wearing a jacket and tie because we had opened the shows. And that was just where I was at. 
But the point I'm trying to say, you see, I have a jacket on tonight. I don't use, always wear a jacket. It's a different look I can wear. It's just the point is, make yourself look like you want people to see you. Because this is your chance. And we all know that saying, right? You only get one shot to make a first impression. If I'm seeing you for the first time, it's very important how I look. Get away from the stripes. Sideways, upside, up and down. You shouldn't be wearing the stripes. Uh, number three is get some bright colors. Uh, bright colors work the best. Uh, plain shirt, bright colors. Uh, but the key you want to understand is the color that your shirt is or the color that you're wearing may not necessarily be the color that comes across on the screen. So again, test it out. I have this great blue shirt I wear for doing a lot of events, but the blue that you see is nowhere near the blue, the, the color of the shirt. But I love the way it comes across on the screen, so I'll use that because it works for me. Uh, I like blues, I like reds, but you pick what looks good for you. In the book, we talk a little bit more detail on that. Again, um, virtual networking, it's important how you come across. Number four, remember everything you do on camera, people can see. So if you need a minute, if you need a minute, turn the camera off, mute yourself, do what you need to, and then come back in. Some people are hesitant. Just mute yourself. Just go out and come back in. It's so important that you get that because remember, whatever you're doing on the screen, everybody can see. And also in this point, watch out for those noisy chairs. If you're sitting there networking, I've networked with people and they're rocking in their chair and it's squeaking and cracking. You don't know what noises a lot of times are going on in your own background, in your own environment. So again, test it out, work with a friend because that kind of stuff can distract from your conversation that you're trying to have. Smile, put it on your face, keep it there, make sure it's natural. Put that smile on, it makes a big difference. Number six here is really look at the camera. Now, look, or look at the green light, whatever it is in the middle of your screen there, because it looks like you're looking at people. It's very important that you make that contact. And we call it eye light contact as opposed to eye to eye contact. Uh, eye contact is very important with the camera. When I'm looking at that camera, it looks like I'm looking at everybody. And if I have a small group of people I'm working with in a networking environment, like we do breakouts and maybe there's eight people in a room. When I'm looking at that, it looks like I'm looking at every person in the room, which is really a plus because you can't do that in person, but you can do it in a virtual environment. Keep Matthew, your hands- are you, uh, are you open to a question? Sure, shoot. I'm not sure if this is within the scope of this talk, but let me try try it anyway. It's from Earl. Why would the audio of everyone in a meeting not be heard when I turn my mic on? So I'm interpreting this as as uh, as soon as he as Earl turns his mic on, he loses the audio from everyone else in the meeting? I don't know the answer, do you? I don't either, no. Sorry, Earl, it's, uh, it's kind of beyond the technical scope of, of this training. And uh, Blake has a comment. If you're, not wear if you're wearing a suit top with pajama bottoms or no bottoms, don't forget not to stand up. <laughs> that's a great piece of advice and we talk about that in the book because i i've done it myself i forgot what we were wearing on the bottom so <laughs> be careful uh, and you know always play it off as part of the conversation and it works real well we can have some fun 
in that in the virtual networking world as well. No further questions. Okay. Um, keep your hands down. Now I'm one of the most guilty people here. Is, is I like to talk with my hands. When I'm on a stage talking, I walk a lot and I talk a lot and I move my hands. But you see what happens is when I put my hands up, my hands have now taken two thirds of the screen. And so you can't really see me anymore. So watch the hands. I'm getting my own coaching about Manny, keep your hands down in a virtual environment. And finally, in this part, use the chat. The chat is a great way to share information. It's a great way. It's how you connect with people. It's how you share information, whether you share it with the entire group or you share it only with a specific person. You have that great ability with the chat. All right, so we got you ready. We got your environment ready. We got your attitude ready. Now, let's talk a little bit about what works and what doesn't work in a virtual environment. How, and, and one of the questions I'm gonna ask is how approachable, how, how, how can you be more approachable in a virtual environment? And approachable people remember are the ones, usually the most approachable people in any event we've learned over the years are the people who are the most successful. They are open to talking with you, to sharing with you. So don't be afraid to go up to people in a virtual environment, just like I tell people in a real environment and ask them a question. You know, I have a great uh, friend of mine, extremely successful entrepreneur, three-time Inc. 500 person, and made a lot of money and has sold and bought companies very successfully. But he is a tremendous networker. And if you met him at an event, he would be very approachable. If you talked with him and he knew you were new, he would reach out to you and help you meet other people in the group. So in the virtual environment, just like in the real environment, you need to, you need to help anyone you can to meet other people in the event. If you know some people <clears throat> and this person's looking, introduce them and help them get to know other people. <clears throat> it doesn't matter if it's virtual or it's live. It is a little different in the virtual environment because you have to be approachable in some other ways as well. And we are approach, we use social media channels and we use a lot of online channels uh, to start conversations. If you work with a tool like LinkedIn, um, you may be out there trying to get people to have conversations with you. Uh, so you're putting out friend requests and things like that. And you're trying to, again, build your network that way. Okay, so there's some things that you need to get right in, in that type of environment. And the first one that I always like to talk about, you need a great picture. If you're going to work with a tools like LinkedIn, Facebook, and other tools, and you're going to do online networking, you need to spend some money and time and energy. Put a great face on it. Get a professional headshot done. Second thing is get a nice professional write-up about what you do, who you are. Every platform has its own ways of how do I distinguish somebody and talk about that particular person in a networking environment. So what I tell you is just Google it or find somebody who can tell you this is how you set it up in LinkedIn. This is how, the best way to set it up in Facebook. So when people are trying to find you they find your picture, they find your write up and they say, I need to connect with that person and I need to have a conversation with them. We have learned that it's easy, you know, if you're in a live environment, you just start, you walk up to somebody and you talk to them. And um, it's still, some people aren't comfortable, I understand that, but 
in an online environment, it's the same thing, though, isn't it? In, a, in an environment, I talk to a lot of people that I've never met. I just saw them on a LinkedIn. I asked them to connect. And once they connected, I asked them for a conversation. I asked them to spend 30 minutes with me on a conversation. And we have a great talk. Now, everyone doesn't buy into that right away. But the point is, you can have tremendous conversations with people online anywhere in the world. Honey, you ready for a question? Shoot away. A little earlier, uh, while you were delivering your training, uh, one of us, Janet Parnes, did something that is frightfully common sense, but I've never seen it done before. She said, uh, I work with professionals on building rapport to boost their business or career. I'd like to connect. And she included her LinkedIn uh, profile link. Comment, please. Okay. Um, I always like to include my LinkedIn profile link because it gives people an opportunity to see who you are, where you've been, what you did. And again, back to the picture thing, uh, I've seen a great upgrade in the pictures in LinkedIn over the last year. Um, it's a way people can learn about you and then they can make a decision. Do, you, do I wanna have a conversation with this person? Is this person someone I need to know or isn't it? And that's why I think it's really important for you to use that link. Okay, Carmen's opinion is, I personally think that was a bold move. It shows courage. Okay, all right. All right, back to you, Manny. No further questions. All right. Um, and again, let's, let's go back, make eye contact again. When You gotta make eye contact with the light bulb right there in front of you. One of the things I used to tell people uh, when we did live networking, we were teaching them, is you walk up to somebody and the way you know you're making eye contact is you remember what color eyes they had. So you just kind of put that in your mind. You can't do that in a virtual environment. So I'm telling you, always keep an eye on the little light at the, at the top of the screen and you'll find it's... Um, it looks like you're making eye contact with them. But when you look at multiple monitors and, and a lot of people have monitors, they, especially in this type of environment, they may have all the people on another monitor. So when you're looking all over the place, it, it makes me feel like I'm not, you're not paying attention to me. And unlike uh, the physical, you know, the live events where you have to approach people, one of the great things about virtual networking is we usually put people in the breakout rooms. Uh, and still, I know some people will, of you may still be a little nervous about those breakout rooms, but the breakout rooms are great. Each person has the opportunity to talk about themselves, share, and then we move on to the next person. Plus, you get to learn about the other set, six, seven people in that room. And then you can make some determinations. Is that somebody I want to connect with? Is that somebody I want to build a relationship with? Uh, just a hint, if, and I've been doing this for many years, and still there are times I'm going to get some butterflies when it comes to networking. It's perfectly natural. But it's just like I learned in the Marine Corps. When you come to that bridge and you got to cross that bridge, you just got to get to the other side. You just got to do it. In networking, a lot of times it's just you got to do something. You got to try something new. You got, and that was a great example where you were talking about the young lady. She tried something different. Try it. If it works, it may be something to make unique. Remember, Relationships are started by learning about the other pe person. So always make sure you have a lot of questions to ask. I was, I was having a meeting today and it, this is a great point for you to, to think about. And 
I, I'm, I'm a questioner. That's what I do. And I believe that's one of the great keys of, that will make you successful, whether it's virtual or live networking, is get the other person talking. And the young lady I was having a conversation said, wait a minute, Manny, you're asking all the questions here. Uh, let me ask you some questions. So she tried to flip the conversation. Uh, when you're asking the questions and the other person's talking, what's happening is people love to talk about themselves. So you are realistically building a tremendous relationship. Networking, whether virtual or live, really isn't for the shy. Get over it. Be willing to be rejected. It's okay. In a virtual environment, you don't really get rejected that much uh, because there's a lot of people around and because we put you in the private rooms and things like that. It's a great opportunity to build some relationships. And in the book, we talk a lot about selecting the right events to go to because that's the other part that's very important. I need to make sure that when I'm doing virtual networking, just like I needed to make sure when I was doing live networking, am I going to the right events? Are these the events that are gonna help me meet the people and build the relationship? The point Penny, to remember- Question from Carmen. Do you have a suggestion to reach out to strangers on LinkedIn? A lot of people may think one is selling something. Sure, we are all selling something, but I like to connect with people just to build the relationship, as Manny says. So the question is, do you have a suggestion to reach out to strangers on LinkedIn? I, I can tell you the one thing that we've used and that I teach people, which is, I use a line really simply like this. Um, I'm trying to connect with and learn more about what people are doing to get ready to to work on, to network, to grow in the next year. And I'd like to learn more about what you're doing. Or you can simplify that to say, I'd like to connect with you because I want to learn more what, about what pe professionals like you are doing to get ready to move forward, to grow, whatever. You take a soft line, you don't ask, you get the connection first, then once the person connects with you, then the next thing to do is ask for that um, 30 sec, 30 minute one-on-one um, -on -one conversation. So you got to connect with them. No further questions. Thank you, Manny. Back to you. Okay. Uh, point to, uh, just one point, get a good picture um, and make sure you have the good write-up in the LinkedIn because What's going to happen is a lot of times when you ask, and I'll go back to that question just for a minute. Uh, when you ask to connect, they're going to go look at your profile. They're going to read a few words about you and see what you're doing. And they're going to either make a decision to connect or not. So we have a lot of good networkers here tonight with us. The final point that I want to talk about is how do you, how do you get take those great networking skills that you already have and how do you transport them into the virtual world and make it just as effective? Now, it's just a bottom line that a lot of people do not like to network, but they know they have to network if they're in business and they build their relationship. Um, people don't like to go to events, but they know they have to and they have to build some relationships. Uh, so for those, the most successful way for you to do it is let's make it a game. Let's make it a challenge. Let's make it an adventure where you can grow and you can learn and you can build some relationships. Because remember, success in business is about the relationships that you build. And events like this one you're at tonight are a tremendous way for you to meet new people and to share and to learn. So if you wanna be successful, you need to create a network. You need to meet people, you need to grow your relationships. So we'll look at a couple, some of the issues here. I need to go to the right events. 
we talked about that somewhat already. Um, how do you know you're going to the right events? It's important. And one of the things that we, we show you is we have actually in our book, what we call a preparation sheet. And what it is, is that when you get ready to do a networking event, it's very important that you prepare. It's very important that you know what you're gonna do. You know what your goals are for that event. You know what you wanna accomplish in that event. And then you actually do it. And when you're done, you come back and say, how did I do? Did I accomplish what I wanted? Did I make it? Was I successful? Um, and again, in the book, we have a whole chapter on how do you find the right events to go to and how can I be successful at those events? I need to get better at networking. How do I do that? Uh, like learning anything, you got to get out here and you got to do this. You got to get out here and you got to listen to some education. This is great. Most events are like this. And then you get a chance to do some networking. You get a chance to meet some people. You get a chance to get into some conversations and you will grow. When I first started networking, I went all over the place. I went to every event I could. I learned a lot, but it took a heck of a lot to go to events. In the virtual world now, I can sit here, I can go to an event in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening, in the early evening, and I can do all that from the comfort of my home. I don't have to drive. I can remember driving, flying to events, doing all that to build relationships. Now you can do it from here. This is an amazing time. I just want you to understand, it's an amazing time for you to build relationships because I don't know if we go back to the other, I don't think we're going back to a pure environment, but you're never going to get this much chance to access people. They're home. They want to talk. They want to talk to somebody. They want to build their own networking. So don't lose sight of that one. Time for a question, Manny. Yep. Go. Uh, post COVID. What's your opinion about the future of virtual? I believe virtual is here to stay. That regardless of what happens in the world, we, we have learned that we can do events just like this and that people can build tremendous relationships. And so I have to say virtual is here to stay. So get good at it. Thank you. No further questions. Okay. Um, so what do we got to look at? I mean, when you go into an event, you know, there are some things you have to look at. Am I making connections? Am I finding new people to talk to? Am I learning? Because if you're not getting those kind of keys from an event, then maybe that's the wrong event for you to be at. And again, as I stated earlier, you need a plan. This is what I'm gonna do. And in the book, we have a planning sheet. This is what I'm gonna do. These are the evaluations. This is how I determined this was a good event, it was a bad event, it worked or it didn't. And you can get all that out of the book. It's uh, just stuff to help you to grow and help you to analyze how the event went. Um, and the follow-up, what are you doing with the follow-up? We meet a lot of people. You'll meet people here tonight. You'll get their contact data. And what will you do with it? What will you do with that data? Will you call them? Will you reconnect with them? Um, or will it just fade away? And will it get lost? I can tell you, uh, one day I was walking into a uh, a office of a good friend and I sat down to talk to her about business and I looked over on her desk and over on the side of the desk is this huge pile of business cards and I mean literally hundreds of them and when I asked what they were she said oh those are the people I've met over the past six months that I haven't got back to yet 
And actually, I said, are you kidding me? And so the thing to remember in the virtual world, you're not going to have those business cards because we don't, you know, that's, I don't know what happened to the business cards, but we have virtual connections. So you might have a file with all the virtual connections. What are you doing with them? Manny, how, is yes. your, has your slide deck frozen? What you're displaying is how to set up you and your, yeah, that would be helpful. Okay. Well, we're on a roll. A question. Do <laughs> networkers need electronic calendars? Well, that's a good question. I, I, I would say yes, because it gives people an easy way. You can send them a link. Say, if you want to talk to me, here's my calendar. Click on something that works for you, and we will make it happen. I have found that even when I do that, a lot of people say, well, I'm better off if you pick something from my calendar and they'll sit, send me their calendar instead of working with mine. Uh, I would say if you're going to really do virtual networking, get yourself an electric calendar. Uh, yes. Thank you. No further questions. Okay. So in the follow-up realm, we actually wrote another book called My Follow My Sales Follow-Up Sucks, uh, in which we detailed a lot of this stuff out. Uh, just, it's great to meet people, but if you don't follow up, it doesn't matter whether it's in the real world or the virtual world. It's so critical that you do the follow-up with people and that when you do that, you get back to them, you build the relationship, you start to make things happen. And again, uh, we go back to how did I do at the event? How many people did I meet? How many contacts did I make? How many one-on-one -on -one meetings did I set up? Were the right people at the events? Did I get any real leads? If you think about this, you learn real quickly that I need to go to places where I'm building relationships. When it comes to talking, again, we had talked about this earlier in the book, you'll find literally dozens and dozens of questions. The important thing is when you go into a networking environment, you need to find a way to get that other person talking. The other person needs to be talking about somewhere between 80 and 90% of the conversation because I, I can tell you from my past experience that I've, I've had conversations with people where they're doing all the talking, they turn around, they're having a conversation with a friend and they say, that Manny, he is so amazing. What a conversation we had. And we didn't have a conversation. They were doing all the talking, but they remembered and we started to build a relationship and we could have a great shot at doing some business together. Uh, whether you're in a 30, 60, two minute, five minute type presentation, the other great thing about virtual networking, those of you who may have a little, you know, I'm uneasy, what do I talk about? How do I remember all that stuff? You don't have to, you can put it in a file you can put it right in front of you. People don't even know that you're reading it or that you're using the notes there and you can practice it. And you, you, know, you get that great five minutes. When you're in a breakout room, let's say with eight people and everybody gets five minutes, that's five minutes of gold. And during that five minutes of gold, you need to put memorable stuff out there that people are gonna grab hold of and that you're the people that you're looking to do business with are getting it, are seeing it, and are using it. Uh, you know, when I, when I see people, I, I have a memorable line which says, I don't care if you're in a $10,000 a year business or 10 million, if you're ready to grow, I can help you get there. You can't get there just by yourself. And that's my pitch. And the pitch, you need something that's unique for you. 30, 60, two minutes, five minutes, something that's memorable, something that will work for you.
get the questions rolling. Again, build your, when I go to a specific industry event, I will have my own set of questions that I'm gonna use for that, for that particular event. Um, in the virtual world, it's the same thing. It's the same thing. So, a uh, couple of questions for you, Manny. Shoot. Elaine would like to know is it best to network to find only your prospects, or should you be looking for people who have audiences to your prospects? I would say you should look for both. Um, you should look for both because the ones that have audiences to your prospects are going to give you even more. Um, so uh, look for both. And sec another question, do you have any yep. tricks to make virtual networking more effective? Um, just the stuff that we've talked about, make sure that your environment looks good, make sure that you look good, um, make sure that you have a memorable pitch that when you get a shot to talk, you're putting something out there that people can remember. If you have uh, a nice clip that you could throw into the uh, chat box that says something, maybe it says something funny, Maybe it's it's a little pit, it, uh, uh, a special line, and then your contact data. Just remember, like I when I'm in a live event, I always I have a picture um, business card so people can remember who we are. How do people remember who you are? Give them a link to your LinkedIn. Give them a link somewhere. Put something out there that's memorable. Elaine wants to know is, does your book include how to prepare for a virtual networking event? It does. It does. No further and, questions. And as well as how to evaluate after, after the event. So this is the book. This is, that's, you know, this is what we're offering. I hope this journey has helped you tonight. We're going, this book, if you like the stuff you heard, you're just, touching the surface because book has a lot more information and a lot more detail in it. It has a lot of forms in there to help you uh, both get ready and evaluate how you did. And we have this book out on Amazon now and we're putting it out there for 99 cents to anyone who wants to grab it. Uh, well worth the investment. So, I hope you'll get out there and get your own copy. Uh, this is all the contact. And one of the things that I want to offer you all tonight is please schedule a meeting. If you want to spend 30 minutes and do a Zoom call with me, if you want to go through anything else we talked about tonight, that's why we put the number out there. So because I'm here, uh, please take it down. Let's. Um, have that conversation. Let's learn a little bit more about each other and see where that takes us. Manny, uh, what is that? Can you give us an, a link, an Amazon link to the book? Um, the link that I gave you, oh, that's, I'm sorry, I didn't put that. If you go to coachmanny.com, which is the website, the link's right there. I didn't want to put that whole big long link in here. So what we did was we put the link on the home page. If you go to coachmanny.com, the link is you click on the little bar that's there and it takes you right to Amazon. Okay, thank you. Um, and I guess I'm free to ask any other questions that people have at this point. Anything else we want to roll through? Okay, everyone, Manny's all yours. I'm not, you, you, you obviously wowed us with your wisdom. <laughs> I don't know about that, but um, there's a lot more information out there. Uh, 
I'm really, the key here is that you take advantage. As I said, this is, this is a time that may never happen again, where you can just, there are people <coughs> ready to talk to you, get out there. And we talked a little bit about LinkedIn. LinkedIn's a powerful tool. Find the right people to connect with out there, connect with them, have a conversation, and you're just going to be amazed at what, uh, how you can start to build those relationships and be patient. <laughs> Excuse me. Manny, do you have a simple way of managing time zones? Uh, most of the tools that I deal with um, will automatically manage those time zones. You, as far as the scheduling zone okay. concern. Yeah, so if I schedule, uh, if you put in there, you want to meet at 8.30 your time and you're in California, it'll show up on my schedule at 11.30. Okay. Is there a tool you use, for example, to figure out what time it is right now in Cape Town or in Sydney, Australia, or? I'll just Google it. Okay. All right. Dr. Google. That's for me is the easiest way. What time is it in Cape Town right now? Lovely. Uh, Elaine has kindly put the link to your Amazon book into the chat. Um, Matt would like to know who does, who does the web development for your site? Uh, I do my own actually. Okay. Elaine wants to know what are your favorite virtual networking groups? And you better say EIN as one of them. What else? What else? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm losing my voice here. I'm okay. Uh, of course, EIN is, is one of my favorites. There's, um, I can get you a list. Um, I've been really experimenting going around to a lot of new groups. Uh, I've watched some groups who were formerly like chambers and stuff like that, who have gone to a virtual platform now. So I've started to go to some of them. I don't really have a favorite. My favorite um, really networking group is LinkedIn. Come on, Manny, you have to say veterans. Uh -huh, yeah, I do have to say that's a good group. It is. Manny, on behalf of um, EIN's 77,000 odd members uh, from 21 meetups throughout North America, I'd just like to thank you very, very much uh, for sharing your uh, uh, words of wisdom. Uh, uh, your advice is just good, solid, uh, um, straight from the trenches uh, information. Uh, and uh, for that, uh, I thank you. Uh, if, uh, if there are no final questions, I'm going to say goodbye to Manny, and then we'll uh, segue into the rest of this evening's agenda. Matt uh, has, has a suggestion for you, Manny. Why not set up a short link like coachmanny.com forward slash book? Okay. All right. I'm going to stop the recording. Manny, thank you very, very much. Thank you.